Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the Roco 3. So this replaces the Roco 2 XS at the top end of Roco's media streaming lineup. Uh, so there are a bunch of boxes here. They all have different price levels and capabilities, but the Roco 3 is at the top end. Price is at $99. So we still have 1080p HD video, and we have that motion control remote, so you can use it for gaming and for navigation. But they've added a few new features with the Roco 3, including a new design, a new internal hardware that gives us four times the performance of the outgoing Roco 2 XS. Uh, we also have new dual band Wi-Fi here, so we have better range and performance thanks to dual band. Now the Roku 3 is the only model that also has an Ethernet port and a USB port for connecting external storage. So the Roku 3 also adds the ability to connect headphones to the remote control so you can listen to the audio privately. So basically it overrides the audio on, the, uh, on your television and broadcasts it over the headphones on the remote control. You can use any headphones, you don't have to use the ones that they've included such as these purple earbuds. Alright, so let's crack this open and see what we get inside. And just lift the lid. So we have our instruction booklet. We have our Roku player wrapped in plastic. We have our remote control. Looks like it has its lanyard already attached, so let's lift that up. All right. So there it is, all wrapped up. On the side, we'll find our battery pack for the remote control. We'll find our headphones, you can see they're in-ear headphones, it looks like we have multiple ear tips as well. On the other side, there's another compartment on the other side here, we'll find our power supply for the Roku box. And at the bottom of the box, we'll just find some important product information, which is basically the legal and license information. Alright, so we have a quick start guide, and we don't need to go through all of this, but you can see it's basic literature. It tells you a little about the ports, what you'll need. You'll need to supply your own HDMI cable, you'll need to connect the power and battery, and you need to set up on your internet. Alright, so let's go ahead and peel off all of the plastic, starting with that Roku player. Alright, so let's take a close look around the design. You can see we have the 3 for Roku 3. On the side we find our fabric tag for Roku. On the back we'll find all of our ports, so that's our power port, reset port, Ethernet jack, we have our memory expansion slot there, as well as our HDMI. So you can see here that we no longer have analog AV output on this model. On the side we'll find our USB port for connecting external storage. Roku 3 branding on the front. We also have an LED light here, which lights up when it's connected. Now on the bottom we'll find a rubber foot for grippability on your uh, entertainment cabinet. And the first thing I noticed when handling this device is that although it's still very light, they've added some weight here. Their previous model, the Roku 2 XS, was so lightweight that HDMI cables would actually pull it off the shelf. I've actually had mine disappear behind my cabinet because the weight of the HDMI cable would actually pull it off the shelf because it was too light. So I'm glad that they've weighted it this time. Alright, so our next stop is the remote control. Again, this is a motion remote control similar to a Wii style remote. So it looks very similar to the old remote. You can see we have our gaming controls here so you can use it in landscape mode or a standard remote mode. So you can see your standard D-pad, your back button, home button, your settings button, play button pause, reverse, etc. You also have your battery compartment on the back. Now new this time is these volume controls for the headphone jack along the side. So you just push this button, slides right out. Alright, so my batteries are installed and now I'm getting a flashing light indicating that this is in pairing mode so it's ready to pair to the Roku player. So let's go ahead and get that connected. Now the interesting thing here is that this is actually using Wi-Fi to connect to the Roku player, not Bluetooth. This also means that it's not using IR, so you don't need line of sight with the Roku. Now another interesting feature here is that if you're listening to Pandora or some sort of music app, you can walk around the house or walk around within Wi-Fi range and still listen to it uh, from the remote. Obviously you can't visually control it unless you have the app on your iPhone or something like that. Alright, so I've gone ahead and connected the Roku 3 to my little kitchen TV, which is easier to demonstrate on. And you can also see that I have my remote control here. And uh, as soon as you press any of the buttons on the remote control, you can see it flickers and lights up for you. Alright, so let's go ahead and set this up for the first time. We're going to go ahead and select English. Click OK. Now I need to connect to my network. So we're going to click continue, and we're going to go to wireless. This is my time capsule, so let's click that, and I have to enter in my information. Okay, so it's successfully connected to my network, so we're going to click continue to run the software update. Alright, so it's run the software update, now it's giving us this little boot animation. 
All right, my next step is to activate the Roku. For this, you'll need to go to a computer. In my case, I'm actually just gonna go to my iPhone. All right, so all I have to do is go to roku.com front slash link, and I'm gonna take that code that they give me, enter it in, and authorize my device. Now my next step is to log in or create a Roku account. I already have one, so I'm gonna go to, yes, I already have one, and log in. Now once I've logged in, I can go ahead and add apps right from the web browser. So if I see any apps I want, I can go ahead and add them already. I've already added some uh, to my previous Roku player, so I'm gonna click continue with that. All right, so my Roku 3 is activated, and now it's preloading all of the apps I selected in the setup process. All right, so my setup is complete. Everything looks great. Now let's get started streaming, so let's click OK. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the basic user interface. So on the left-hand side, we have all of our categories. So I can see my channels, which is everything I've currently downloaded and logged into. So I have Netflix, Amazon, Instant Video, Hulu Plus, Flickster. And we have some apps like Underground or Weather Underground, so I can see the weather here. Uh, so you have a variety of apps here. So it's not just video or music. So I have music here, uh, but you also have uh, apps. So if we go to Weather Underground, just to show you, so there you go, you get a radar, satellite, everything like that. Now it's important to note that the apps dictate the user interface. So for example, the Netflix app will have a very different user interface than the Amazon Instant Video app. So let's go to Netflix. So we have Netflix and you can see I've logged into my account already so I see my previous history, so don't judge me. So here's Caprica, we can resume playing episode one. All right, so it starts streaming pretty quickly and quality does improve once it buffers a little better. So if we go to the Amazon Instant Video app, you'll see a little different user interface. So there you go, I've already logged into my account here. So we go to Prime Instant Videos. I'll see all the videos I have available to me for free, such as Avatar, and we can resume playing. Of course, you can use the remote to scrub through it, so you get chapters. Now you can get more content by going to the channel store. So let's go to the channel store. And you can see it's broken down by featured, what's new, what's most popular, top paid. So there are some apps you pay for. A lot of them are subscription based. Uh, so if you go to the most popular, let's see if we find something that we can download. So let's go to the Smithsonian channel. Click OK, add channel. All right, so we can go right to the channel and we can start watching the content here. Now, this is one of the channels. There are many channels on the Roku player which provide free content. You don't need to log in. You just load the app and you get free content. Now, the settings button is contextual. So for example, if you're a Netflix and you press the settings button, you have a variety of options there. Now you can also remove channels, so you just go to the app, again press that settings button, and you can rate it, you can remove the channel, or you can move it around. So if I wanna move it around, just click OK, and I can jog it around on the screen, left or right. Click OK to drop it. But if I wanna remove it, just hold that uh, settings button again, and remove the channel. Now we also have search, so we can search for something like Star Trek, which is a previous search I did, but let's go to Battlestar Galactica. Let's really geek it out here. All right, so I can see what services it's available on. I can see it on Amazon, I can see it on Vudu, or Blockbuster On Demand. You can see the pricing as well, so $3.99 for a rental. Another big feature here is that motion remote control, again, works a lot like the Nintendo Wii player, so all I have to do is wave it around in the air, and you can see your cursor here, which helps you to navigate. So we're gonna play some Angry Birds. So it's pretty basic in terms of Angry Birds. All I have to do is hold the OK button and move it up or down, left and right, and launch. There you go. Now in terms of using the headphone jack on the remote control, you can connect any set of headphones. It doesn't have to be the ones they've included. So as soon as you connect it, it overrides the audio and takes it right to your headset. Now I can also control the volume, so you'll see that appear in the upper right corner of the display. And as soon as I pull the headphone jack off, the volume goes back, or the audio goes right back to the television. Now, in case you're wondering, this does not act as a volume controller for the TV. You can see you'll just get an uh, indicator that uh, that function is not available until you have headphones connected. 
Now, perhaps the best way to navigate your Roku player is by using the app. So, for example, I can see my channels. I can go to my remote control. Uh, so I have an on-screen remote control, which works very similarly to the uh, physical remote control. So I have all my controls up here, home button, back button, options button. I also have my media controls. Uh, more importantly, I also have a keyboard. So if I need to enter in any passwords or do any searches, that's one way of doing it instead of having to use the on-screen keyboard. You also have the store here, which is a very easy way of navigating the store options. So instead of going through the uh, store on the screen, you can do it right from here. You can see it does it all without changing the view on the screen. So let's see if I can find something I don't already have, such as NBC News, free, install. And I'll go ahead and install it on the Roku player in the background. All right, so it's installed. I can click launch and it'll launch it on my Roku. Now under my channels, I can quickly launch any of my apps here. So I can go to Amazon, launch it for me. I can change my mind and go to Netflix, it jumps to Netflix. Now another neat feature is called play on Roku. So you can stream your music or photos directly to your Roku player. So it's kind of like a AirPlay feature, but it doesn't support video. So let's go ahead and play a song. Let's choose an artist. You can search your uh, onboard library uh, for the music. Again, your music has to be on your device and it streams from your device to your uh, Roku player over the uh, Wi-Fi network. So they all have to be on the same network. All right, so I just choose a song, click play, and the Roku takes over. Hey, Macklemore, can we go thrift shopping? What? All right, so you get the album art and you have your media controls right here so you can stop it, pause it, that sort of thing. Now this also works with photos, so I can go to my camera roll here, and I'm just going to pick some here. I'll stream my photos. I can just swipe through them. And there you go. It takes a little while to catch up, so let me pick some better photos here. There you go. Now you can also access files on a USB drive, so if you connect a USB drive to your Roku player, uh, you can access video, music, or photo files. So with the video files, you can see MKVs or MP4s. With music, you can see AAC or MP3. With photos, you can see JPEGs or PNGs. In order to browse those files, all you have to do is launch the Roku USB media player. Now if you don't have that app, on your uh, player, you can go to the App Store to get it. So basically it brings up a file viewer and you can jump to a variety of file types and view them. So you can see things broken down by music, video, and photo. And it works pretty quickly and pretty easily. You can even see album art on some uh, music files as well. Now under settings, you have lots and lots of options. And one of the more interesting ones is theme. So you can change the theme of your user interface. So right now we're on the standard Roku default theme, but you can go to Graphene. We'll take a moment to load it, and you can see it changes everything. Nebula is a more whimsical theme. I actually really like this one. It's kind of like a sci-fi theme. All right, there you go. So you can see a very colorful theme. So again, you can see how the icons have changed quite significantly for that theme. So there you go. That's Daydream, and you can check out the artwork. So again, very different sort of design and layout. So in conclusion, the Roku 3 is definitely one of the best media streaming boxes you can buy right now. It provides the most options, the most apps, and the most content possible. It's a fantastic aggregator of all the options out there. And definitely because it's one of the biggest, you get the most content. So of course, some of it is free, some of it is subscription-based, and some of it is live. So you do get some live TV, but not really. It's pretty much an on-demand sort of box. Uh, you also get some apps uh, to interact with uh, information like weather or news or even your Facebook account. And certainly the ability to listen to your audio through the headphone jack and mute the TV is definitely very unique and very innovative and something I could definitely imagine using. Again, you don't need to use the ones that, the headphones they've included. You can use your own headphones to get a better quality experience. So overall, I'm definitely impressed by the Roku 3, something I highly recommend. Streaming looks good. Audio sounds great. The user interface is simple and elegant and works very quickly. You also get a great app for the iOS platform or Android platform to control it. And you get those benefits such as uh, audio and photo streaming. Now, of course, this is also competing with the Apple TV at $99, but doesn't stream the iTunes library. So if you're heavily invested in the iTunes library or the Apple ecosystem with photo streaming and your iTunes match library and that sort of thing, maybe the Apple TV is probably the best option for you. But for everybody else, I think the Roku 3 is definitely the media box to get. So that's going to do for me, guys, in this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one.